What would change in the world if you, me, and everyone choose to feed the wolf of possibilities instead of the one of doubt, distrust, and despair? The way I see it, our point of view creates reality, not the other way around. Somewhere deep within, I think we know that. In this podcast, I am daring you to claim this remarkable superpower. Join us and be inspired by trackers, explorers, and finders of possibilities from the multiverse of hope. Welcome to the podcast, Feeding the Wolf of Possibilities, with your host, Katrina Valentin. Welcome to this episode of Feeding the Wolf of Possibilities. My guest today is life coach and mentor, Laura Simmons, a firm believer in something that is at the very core of this wolf adventure that we're on. Your point of view creates your reality. Reality does not create your point of view. And Laura used this to change her whole relationship with food many years ago as a teenager with a so-called eating disorder. So thank you so much for coming on, Laura. Thank you for having me. I'm very excited to be here. I mean, your point of view does create your um, reality. I mean, we talk about that all the time. And I was very lucky when I was a teenager in that I did create a different point of view with my body, which changed so much for me that I had been abusing my body for years and years and years and I just sort of came across something different that created a totally different reality for me so yeah so would you be willing to tell us a little bit just you know we've all been teenagers and there's a lot of teenagers out there in the world would you just tell us a little bit what was going on for you what was up for you and your body those years so I was at I was at boarding school growing up actually since I was eight years old and, you know, when I was a teenager, probably when I was about, well, 14, 15, I put on a bit of, well, quite a bit of weight, you know, puppy fat, as they, they like to, to call it in this reality. And I remember that there was a boy that I really liked. And he turned around one day and he called me fatty. And I thought, oh, my goodness, that's terrible. You know, I, I didn't want to be called fatty. And I thought, right, I'm going to change this. I'm going to do something different. So I actually lost about well just under two stone I'm not sure what that is in pounds but it's you know it's a lot of weight basically and that made me very happy (laughs) that I lost weight but I was very concerned about the fact that I was going to put it back on so I I basically became bulimic it was my way of controlling how I wasn't going to put weight back on Being at boarding school, I also had this matron at school that, you know, I didn't really want to have to go and see her when I got sick. So because not only was I dynamically hiding this from everybody, uh, but I, you know, I just didn't want to go and see her. She She was basically a mean bitch. So what I did was I would get water, which was the only thing that I had that was readily available, and I would used water when I was drinking it to change it into what I needed to make me feel better or to get me better so that I wouldn't have to go and see somebody so that they wouldn't find out what I was doing and that kind of worked so let me um there's two things I want to ask you about so the first thing is you know when that guy called you fatty and you went to oh that doesn't work for me I don't Mm -hmm. want to be called fatty so you lost weight so yeah. how did how did that get created? That was before you really were bulimic or whatever that is. But yeah, what, what, what was what created that? A well, choice? I I think yeah, it was a, it was very much a, a I didn't like what he called me, and it was like kind of like a fuck you basically. I'm like ah, uh-uh, this is not happening for me. So I lost weight very quickly, but that kind of didn't really work for me because I also loved my food, <laughs> you know. <laughs> And so I was able to lose weight very quickly, but it wasn't something that I could kind of sustain. I didn't really want to have, you know, I was then worried that if I was going to eat normally, it Mm. was going, I was going to put it back on again. So the first time you basically stopped eating to lose the weight, not to become fatty. Okay. Yes. Because that was like, oh, I can do that. I can do this, but like I can crush cause, uh, crush chart, you know, and lose weight in sort of three Mm. months. And that's really easy, but it wasn't like a sustainable thing for me. So I also think a lot of, I think that's what happens with a lot of teenagers. They are able to like a lot. I think your experience 
happens to a lot of teenagers. They get oh, called something, yeah. they realize actually this doesn't work for me and this is not what I desire. They do a crash diet, they lose weight, and then it isn't sustainable. Mm -hmm. So they kind of end up in something else because the choice came as a reaction and resistance to something. <laughs> oh, yes, absolutely. Yeah. So, so now you're in, you're trying to find something more that works better for you. And this is like, you're describing this whole complex reality at the boarding school for us, mm -hmm. the matron and the, and I guess also where you get served your meals, right? Because you're at the boarding school. So you don't yeah. have a lot of choice of what yeah. to then when to eat. Yeah. So the water, you described it as when you were sick. Could you talk a little bit about what kind of relationship you created with water and what it did for you? Yeah, so it was really, you know, water is something that you can get hold of really easily. It's just there for everybody. So it's just like such an easy thing to, to use. But also, you know, we all know that water is good for you. Mm. You know, if you drink lots of water, it's healthy. It, it, you know, nurtures your body. It kind of cleans you out. I mean, we learn about that at school. So it's, it was like the one thing that I knew that if I had lots of it, it was, it was okay. So I would, yeah. So what I, what I did was I would, at the very beginning when I did it, I would hold a glass of water and I would ask the water to change into everything that my body needed in that moment to make my body better whatever was going on for my body, whether it was, I was feeling really run down, you know, mm. whether I was, um, I had a headache. I mean, whatever it was, I would ask the, the water to change into, I guess, like the medicine or the, mm. or the cure or whatever it was that I needed at the time to kind of nurture my body and to make it better. And so I would hold it just, I mean, just for 30 seconds and I would ask it to change and then I would drink it. And then have this sense that it was going through my, every cell of my body and regenerating and, you know, and just making everything better. And it so kind of just worked. Asked, you asked the, at that young age though, which is really amazing, but you asked the yeah. molecules of the water to change, to become yeah. what you required. Yes. How was that connected to the weight, keeping the weight off? Like how was that connected to your eating eating challenge <laughs> yeah so so it was it was a few years later actually because I, I was building it for some years but it was when I was asking to change that part of my life you know to get mm. out of this cycle because it really was a cycle of you know um, I mean eating disorders is a vicious cycle you, you know you go into it and first of all it becomes you know um, a habit and then it becomes an addiction and so I was asking to change that and it was like, well, if I can do this with water, I can also do this with food. Hmm. Because I already had a point of view that water was was good for me. And every time I drank water, it would change and, and create for my body. I I had a I I trusted that, you know, I trusted that was going to work for me. So then started to get a point of view that everything I ate then became a contribution for my body. Hmm. Which is very different because most people don't have that point of view with what they eat. You know, we have all these points of view about what's good for us and what's bad for us, how much we can have, how, how little we should have, all of these points of view that we have. But I actually, I now don't have any of those points of view. It literally is what I choose to eat will be a contribution for my body. And that is, I think it's more of a different way of functioning with food than most people even realize because everything, even the fact that we have a point of view that this is good for me and this yes. is bad for me, this is enough or this is too much, this is too little, yeah. all of those are points of views. And I think in many ways, we, we think that if we just, if we just stick with the things that we think are good for us at least that would be better for the body but you're basically saying that everything you choose to eat you ask it to be a contribution to your body yeah so what it does actually if you if you start to function in that way what it does is that you you then start to trust that you just won't choose anything that isn't a contribution mm. oh so it's like yeah yeah so it's a it's yeah. like a simultaneous shift it, it both is. goes with you asking it to contribute, but also you trusting yourself to actually, or your body to choose something that will contribute. Yes. And also you just know that if there's something that, if I go to my fridge, for instance, 
and I have a, you know, a choice of what I'm going to eat, if I go for that, then I know that everything else is not necessarily going to contribute, but that will. Mm. So you've been doing this for how many years now? Well, gosh, I'm, I'm in my late 40s now, so <laughs> for quite some time. But it's, it's interesting because I actually until recently didn't realize that I had a different point of view because I just do it so naturally and it just is what I do. I didn't realize until I was doing, you know, until conversations that we have in access consciousness and using the tools that I actually function a little bit differently when it comes to eating and choosing food than a lot of people. Have you ever tried to tell people around you, like even when you were a teenager, did you try to, t when, when things started to shift and you actually started to mm -hmm. notice that this works, did you ever try to tell your parents or your friends or something about how you did this? Um, no, but I have, I mean, I've, have, I've helped a lot of, you know, a lot of people in, in the, the, the last 20 years who have mm -hmm. had eating disorders. I mean, my, I've got three daughters who are teenagers. You know, they've, they've had friends who, you know, they will say to me, um, my children will say, oh, mom, can you speak to my friend so-and-so because she's having problems with something, you know, this or with that. So my children do know I have spoken to them about it. How is their relationship with food? I think really great. I mean, I've never, I have always allowed them to eat whatever they want. Mm. You know, I've never, I've never sat them down and says, you've got to eat this or you've got to eat that. You know, I will always also give them a choice. I will ask them, what would you like to eat tonight? You know, what food would you like to have? So I'm always giving them a choice. And if they don't want it, they don't want it. And it's, you know, totally fine with me. They can also eat whatever, whenever they want, they can go into the kitchen. I mean, my, my, Fridge is not always full, but, you know, if it is, they can have whatever they want. Because my point of view is that, you know, if you would like to eat something, then go for it, then eat it and have that contribute to you. Mm. I, it's amazing. Also, the simplicity of it. <laughs> it makes so much <laughs> well, sense. I know, but it is. Everything is, for, for me, it's like the simplest things are what creates the greatest. It's where we buy into everybody else's points of view about what we should and shouldn't be doing, that's when it gets complicated. So food is also a big part of our social interaction. So you, I know yeah. you've been married and you probably have friends that you hang out with. <laughs> yes. So how does this, how does your way of functioning with food work like in family life or in social, social instances? So I, I mean, if I, if I go and eat a meal and it's put in front of me, I just know, I just make, I, I just, uh, have a point of view that what I'm eating is going to contribute mm. it's like the water the whole water thing you know yeah. I change the molecules of the water so that it go, it's going to create greater for my body I can do that with food too I mean we all can you know it's it is your point of view creates your reality so my point of view is that whatever I eat is going to be a contribution whether it's something that I choose to eat or not, if that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, yeah, even if even if somebody else is choosing it for you, you exactly. will still have that point of view that this will contribute yeah. to me. So during all these years, have there been, have you shipped the, you know, this is what you got to when you were a teenager, first via the water, having mm -hmm. it contribute whatever, you know, medicine, whatever you required, and then getting out of the bulimic by doing this with food too. So how has it influenced the rest of your life? How has this like awareness uh, seeped into the rest of your life? I think what it did is it created a trust that I, that I have and a relationship or a creationship, I would like to call it with my body, with what I know and my body. And, you know, it is, you know, it is kind of miraculous in a way. In other words, it's, it doesn't, fit into this reality's point of view of what you could, should or shouldn't be able to do with, your, with you and your body so it's like well if I can do that then you know it's it is as you said right at the beginning when you introduced me it's like your point of view does create your reality so mm -hmm. it's like what if you could look at all of your points of view about what you create even around for instance the way you sleep or the way you age mm -hmm. you know all of this is a point of view that you learn as you grow up and it's like well what do you want to create for you what is your reality around sleep and aging you know do you have to age do you have to need sleep you know all of these are I guess what you what you asked me is is what I have actually 
looked at and changed and you know it's actually created something well, different for me well you gave a brilliant answer so there's a few things from that um for example I know that you take walks very often around your house you know yes like, not small walks, but long walks. <laughs> yes. and, uh, every time you talk about that or post pictures from that, there is a sense of contribution. So could you talk a little bit about like the movement and how you use sure. this? Yeah, so it's like, well, um, I mean, a lot of people will, will go about their day and they are not really present with the choice that they're making in what they're doing. But it's like, well, what if you, when I go for a walk, I take my body with me. It's like, I'm not just going for a walk, I am going for a walk and I'm taking my body with me, you know, which is, which might sound interesting or, you know, but actually how many people really do that? You know, how many people are really, really present when they do something like that? So, and I love to take photographs as you've just mentioned. And what that also does is that, you know, when I go for a walk, I'm like looking for all the beautiful things I can take pictures of. So it's like, well, it's not just when I'm walking now that I see lots of beautiful things. It's like that seeps into all of my reality, into everything that I do, because it's like I'm asking all the time, well, what can I take beautiful pictures of? Hmm. You know, what is beautiful that I can see? Yeah. So yeah. You, you do, you start to become much more present in just a, in the really little things that you wouldn't normally notice. As you well. also do this thing that I've been noticing ever since we started to work with each other, which is many years now, we've been oh, working yes. <laughs> with each other. And uh, one of the things that you're capable of doing is you get an idea. Yeah. And then often those ideas involve a lot of people. And when you get that idea, and when you have like a demand in your universe for things to occur, they just do. It's one of the, right. it's one yeah. of the amazing talents you have. And I'm wondering if that is also connected to this brilliant way of using your point of view creates your reality. Yeah, well, I haven't really ever looked at it like that. I guess it's like a presence that you have with your knowing. I mean, I when I know something, it's like, I know it, you know. <laughs> I know it's true and I'm going to, and this is what I am going to do. And this is what I'm choosing because I know it's going to be a contribution. So it's like, you know, since I was, I don't know, 14, 15, with what I chose around the whole water thing and the food thing, it's like my knowing always, you know, when I knew something and I chose it, it worked, if that yeah. makes sense. So I guess it sort of come, becomes a little bit more easy and you can then trust yourself a little bit more with your knowing. Well, a lot in your case, <laughs> I guess. And, and what I just realized is, you know how, consciousness has such an impeccable sense of timing and everything sh shows up different than we think it will yeah. so all those years ago when that guy or boy called you fatty yeah like it actually changed your whole life and it's that you know what's right about this that we're not getting yet like that yeah. single comment moved you onto this whole new path of your life from that so even that like the point of view creates a reality, like even something like that, we don't know what it will create. And maybe that particular thing is exactly what's required. Yeah. To change. And, it's, and, when, and when you say that, what, what comes up for me is that, you know, before then, I was always looking outside of myself. But what that did is it made me look at my choice and what I knew I could do and change for me. So it became much more about me choosing for me and um, about me having the capacity to have a reality that I wanted and that worked for me as opposed to what everybody else thought I should be and have you know so you really, you just, it's one of those times when you know you could find that boy and thank him not I know I don't remember. even remember who he was now <laughs> so no, I, it was like, but I'm very grateful but it's so interesting because at the moment I'm selling my house and I've got my house in the market and I was in um, looking for a house to buy. So my point of view with that is that I just know that there will be an exact moment in time where the right, the right person will come walk into my house and will want to buy my house at the right moment that I will find a house to buy. Yes. And that at the moment, everything, because I have that ask in my world for this to happen, 
the universe at the moment is changing everything and it's you know lining everything up and and it may take a little bit of time but you know at the end of the day I just have this point of view that everything will just be easy so it doesn't have to be hard you know just if you're willing to wait and be patient and to have things show up when they're supposed to it can all just fall into place and that is actually one of the keys to ask the universe is that yeah really give the ask to the universe and then be patient as the universe rearranges itself because it has a lot more people in it than us and it's so funny because I had a I had a property before I'd had for years and years and years and everyone was saying to me I'm saying everybody my family my friends were saying oh you must sell it you must sell it I'm saying no I know when I was I need to sell it I know when I need to sell it and then I got this the hit okay now's the time to sell it so I put it on the market the first people that walked in put bought it and they, it literally went through on the day of Brexit. So it's, you know, there was like a timing. There was such a, an impeccable timing of it. And it was sort of like, if you can just trust that you know when you know, then listening to the whispers of the universe. So if somebody <laughs> is listening to this and is currently maybe having some issues with their body mm-hmm. and not really knowing even where to start to go into the knowing with their body, but also start trusting that they actually have the capacity to change things and molecules mm-hmm. and points of views. What, what would you, what would you suggest that they start with? Well, I, my favorite thing has always been to destroy and uncreate your relationship with you and your relationship with your body every day. Cause it's really the points of view that you have that then you start to solidify those, which then get you stuck. So it's like, well, if you can wake up every morning and go, okay, now what can I create with my body? What can, you know, what can my body look like? I have no idea every day what my body is going to look like in the mirror. So it's like, I am like, oh, I wonder what my body is going to look like today. And sometimes it can look, for me, sometimes it can look a little like not so great. And I go, oh, okay. So today you're not looking so great. Okay, that's fine. And then the next morning it's like, oh, okay. I wonder what my body's going to look like today. So it can really change. It can morph if you don't have a point of view that your body doesn't look great, if that makes sense. Yes. And it's similar to how we, you know, our feelings come and go, our sense of, of possibility come and go, yeah, all of that. But what if that particular relationship with our body could actually be new every day? Yes. And I would say the other, one other thing is to have to be grateful. Find one thing that you're grateful about your body every day because the more great gratitude you have for your body that just you know expands your whole world and changes everything too thank you and thank you so much uh for coming on Mm -hmm. and taking us on this like journey from body into actually house selling a house i know it's funny that we just you know (laughs) it is yeah Thank you so much for listening to my podcast, Feeding the Wolf of Possibilities. I hope you have more space in your world now. If you would like to listen to earlier episodes, share with other people or subscribe, please go to Spotify, iTunes or visit katrinavalentin.com slash wolf.